What connects ancient African drum circles to this Coachella performance by Beyonce? And what do historically black colleges and universities have to do with it? If you've seen the 2002 film Drumline, you know this electric feeling all too well. From hip hop inspired beats to innovative dance routines, black colleges have been laying down classic beats and grooves for years that set them apart from the rest. Today, we're gonna take a look at the roots of HBCU drum lines and find out why this percussive party is so entertaining. When the movie Drumline came out, I was in seventh grade, right? Yeah. And, and what the school had went on a field trip, I, but my class wasn't going. I didn't go. I'm like, wait, wait I'm the drummer though in the school. Like, I need to be seeing this movie. Like, I ended up yeah. seeing the movie about three times in the theater. That's, that's one movie that don't nobody want to watch with me because I'm gonna say every single word. I was in eighth grade when the, the movie Drumline came out. Um, I went to Chapel Hill Middle School. Chapel Hill Middle School is the feeder of Southwest DeKalb High School, which is the, the actual band for the Atlanta a and Drumline. There were actually students that got paid. All the playing parts, all the cadences were parts of the Southwest DeKalb Band program. That was a high school band? That was a high school band. To understand how we got here, we have to take a look at the origin of black marching bands as a whole. Throughout America's military history, many African Americans were drafted into the military without property, a career, or a formal education. The Union used these black soldiers to drum up support for the war and inspire people to enlist. Groups of smaller military bands would travel to community events to play patriotic music. They performed for militias to inspire them for the perils of war. Francis Johnson was a leader amongst these men and laid groundwork for black military musicians. He is the first African-American to have his composition published as sheet music. In 1837, he was also the first African-American musician to tour in Europe. During the Civil War, there were around 185,000 black men enlisted. When the war ended, many uneducated black musicians were left with nowhere to go. So they kept doing what they knew how to do to get by. Minstrel brass bands popped up to play music to move and entertain a crowd. Minstrelsy is a controversial performance form where stereotypically African attributes are emphasized for entertainment. This blatantly racist form of performance was often the only way black musicians could earn any type of living. By the time World War I came around, groups like the Harlem Hellfighters had emerged. Officially known as the 369th Infantry Regiment, they mainly consisted of black soldiers and recruits from Puerto Rico. The Hellfighters were well known for their military band led by James Reese Europe. The band not only performed in battle, but also toured Europe playing jazz and ragtime tunes. During the war, the Hellfighters helped introduce Europe to black American music. Despite their cultural importance, the Harlem Hellfighters spent the most time in continuous combat than any other American regiment. They suffered the most casualties too. But where did school marching bands come from? For that, we have to go back to after the Civil War. After emancipation, schools for African Americans were established in the South. Today, these institutions are called HBCUs, or Historically Black Colleges and Universities. In the South, the music culture is so prevalent, it's so thick, it's still strong. It's like kids can grow up going to see a battle of the bands and, and being influenced by that. Um, why do HBCUs play such a big role in marching band culture? You know, the, the history of marching band is very militant, it's very straightforward, it's, you know, it's commands. Uh, the military bands were there to help the military. We got to give credit to Dr. William Foster at Florida a and really, who kind of, kind of changed the way HBC bands appeared and how they performed. And it gives us a sense of belonging. We, we hear we hear our music, we, we produce our music, but to put it on a field with live instruments gives us that, that, that seasoning that a lot of other bands cannot give. Music directors like W.C. Handy and Dr. William P. Foster shaped the early band sound by incorporating African music traditions. Because of segregation, these bands developed independently and created a unique sound centered in African-American culture. There are three primary styles of marching bands, military, core, and show style. The style we're talking about today, and the one most often used by HBCU bands, is show style, also sometimes called traditional. 
Show style band tradition is rooted in the foundations of African-American music like blues and jazz. Syncopation is the concept of displacing the stress notes in music. For example, Mary Had a Little Lamb is stressed in a classical European approach with no syncopation. Whereas something like this cadence has the stress on the off beats. Call and response is the idea of musical conversation. You play something and I play back in response to you. This comes from traditional African drumming circles where the music was improvised and felt as a push and pull between the players. African vocality is everything you've heard in R&B, rap, jazz, and blues. All the runs, the rhythmic speech, the vocal effects. This can even be felt on a drum line with no singing through chants and callouts. HBCU drum lines are also unique with their style of composition. If we look at the core style of percussion battery, only three instruments are represented. Snare drum, bass drum, and multi-toms, also referred to as tenors. The additional tenor drum adds for a driving, rapid-fire middle voice, and they use marching cymbals to add some top-end flair, both audibly and visually. You may have also noticed that the equipment used is different. Core style and modern military drum lines use rigid harnesses that make carrying and playing the drum much easier. HBCU drum lines opt to use straps and slings for an increased range of motion, letting them incorporate dances and physical stunts into their playing. One staple of HBCU bands is a dance routine called the breakdown. Dr. William Foster of Fan Muse Marching 100 laid the groundwork for the breakdown. The breakdown is a special part of the show where the band dances and plays a mashup of current popular music. Today, HBCU drum lines are thriving with dedicated events like the Honda Battle of the Bands, the National Battle of the Bands, and other regional events. HBCU drum lines have even influenced pop music. So, Beyonce, she pretty much raised me. Like, like the, the first CD I ever bought with my own money was Writings on the Wall. Uh, what was your reaction when Beyonce reached out to you? <laughs> that's a whole. I, I'm. A, that's a whole story. I'm gonna try to condense it. I quit my corporate job in, in February 2018. I wasn't really being fulfilled. So a month later, I get a call from Don Roberts, who is the uh, the owner and CEO of Drum On Live, and he says, "Hey, I have an opportunity. You have to leave for two months, um, but it's paid. It's for a very big artist. I cannot tell you who it is, but I promise you." it will it will be worth it i said to my homeboy i'm like hey man you got that call from day he's like yeah i got the call i was like i haven't heard anything do you know anything about it and he's like man all i know is for beyonce i said who he's like yeah it's for beyonce i said huh i was like okay i i have like rehearsal footage in my mind of beyonce what was the, what was the energy like what was the vibe like honestly speaking speaking truly and honest it felt like band practice every single day. Like Beyonce's legendary Coachella performance, other pop stars like Lil Nas X have incorporated HBCU bands in their art. Right now, there are 107 HBCUs out of the nation's approximately 5,300 universities. The culture of the HBCU drumline goes hand in hand with the plights of African Americans today. The constant fight to be relevant when your slice of pie is the smallest has pushed these groups to create something unique and refined. Much like jazz in its day, drumline is a cultural phenomenon. Before you go, I wanna tell you about a new documentary series on PBS Voices, American Veteran, Keep It Close. Each episode tells the story of a U.S. military veteran and a special object they have from their time in service. A vial of lip gloss, a small stone, even a microphone. Check it out at the link in our description and let them know that Soundfield sent you. One more thing. We want to invite you to take the PBS Digital Studios annual audience survey. It helps us a lot if Soundfield fans participate. You even get to vote on potential new shows. There's a link in the description below. And if you have a few minutes, we would love your input. Thanks.